Thank you, Coach Riley, for inviting me to give this pregame talk to the team. I know as players and coaches, you have to take things one game at a time. You don't look ahead. You prepare for each game the same. All that stuff, I get it. It's important. But I also know that a lot of you are new. Freshmen, transfers. You've never been a part of this rivalry, and you may not understand what it's all about. So before you walk out on that field, let me tell you. It's all about you, gentlemen. It is all about you. Nobody cares about UCLA football. I don't just mean national pundits or college football fans across the country. Obviously, they don't care. No, I mean literally nobody cares about UCLA football. Not even UCLA fans. Probably not UCLA players. They only care about you. Some of you may have seen some of UCLA's games on television this year. And you noticed, I'm sure, that the stands were almost completely empty. UCLA football crowds look like preseason WNBA crowds. They look like Cleveland Indians crowds at the beginning of Major League. That's how many people actually care about UCLA football. Now you're going to walk through that tunnel in just a minute. When you do, those seats will be filled with tens of thousands of UCLA fans. Now don't worry about that. I mean, first, it'll probably be the most effeminate home crowd you've ever seen. Besides, your opponent will be just as surprised as you are that there are actually people there. Because for the most part, this is the only time all year that any of them have shown up. Why? Because they don't care about UCLA football. Nobody does. They only care about you. You're Elvis. UCLA is the opening act. That's just how it is. That's how it's always been. Now, there's good reason for that. You gentlemen play for the University of Southern California. You're Trojans. This is one of the best college football programs of all time. Elite. Some of the best teams in college football history stood where you stand today. Some of the biggest names in football history wore the same uniform you wear today. Lott, Allen, Simpson, Seau, Munoz, Baselli, Swan, Bush, Matthews, Polamalu. There's more. A lot more. I can't name them all. We'd miss kickoff. When you come to USC, you come here to win championships. The goal always is to be the best. To stand on the field against the best this country has to offer and to beat them down. To dominate them. To make them quit. The standard here is perfection. It's an unforgiving standard. It requires more dedication, more effort, more talent than anybody else. We don't always meet that standard. Sometimes we fail to prove that we're the very best. We come up short. But the standard never changes. That's who we are. Now granted, occasionally... Some hillbilly will wander in from Kentucky and try to change the standard. He'll try to tell everybody that it's a championship if you win the South Division. Or he might brag about all the Warriors on his 500 team. And when that happens, we'll show him the door. And we might take six years to do it. We might even give him a contract extension first. We might sit through a full season of watching airplane banners fly over the Coliseum demanding his firing. But gentlemen, by God, we will show him the door. Because at USC, the standard never changes. The standard is championships, conference championships, national championships. That's who we are. That is not who they are. That's not who you're playing. UCLA does not play for championships. Their goal is not to be the best. That is not their standard. It is not what they work towards. UCLA has not won a championship of any kind in decades. They don't care. That's not what they're here for. When an opponent walks into the Coliseum, they see banners celebrating 11 national championships. They see jerseys celebrating six of our seven Heisman winners, including the jersey of the guy who killed people, but not the jersey of the guy whose family got some money. You're not going to see any of that here. You can't make a bunch of banners for championships and trophies that have never been won. UCLA isn't about national championships any more than the University of Arizona or Boise State are. UCLA is about city championships, like a Little League team. Their goal every year, no matter who the coach is, no matter what their record is, no matter the situation, their goal is to beat you, to ruin your season, to go up to all those goals that are sitting in front of you, all of the things that you worked so hard for for the last 12 months, to take them out of your hands, throw them on the floor, and stomp on them until they're shattered and worthless. That's what they care about. It's all they care about. You are their Super Bowl. UCLA is infatuated with you the way a stalker is infatuated with his favorite celebrity. The way that crazy bunny cooker 
was infatuated with Michael Douglas and Fatal Attraction, the way ESPN is infatuated with the SEC. You give them meaning. Nothing else matters. Losing to Arizona at home the week before the game that can give you a berth in the conference championship game? That's the most UCLA thing imaginable. It's peak Bruin, you might say. I want you to understand who you're facing. In 2000, UCLA opened its season by beating number three Alabama, and two weeks later by beating number three Michigan. And they still managed to lose six games that year. That's a classic UCLA football season. That's who they are. The meltdown is inevitable with these guys. Sometimes it happens early, sometimes it happens late, but it's gonna happen, and that's why their fans stay away, out of shame. Except today, they'll be here today, for the first team all year, they will be here to see you. It's the only thing they care about. It's the only game anybody associated with UCLA football ever cares about. They only care about you. They need you. You are the wind beneath their wings. You complete them. That's why that loss last week to Arizona means nothing. Sure, it ended their college football playoff chances. It hurt their conference title chances. But they never cared about those things anyway. If you think for a second that your opponent will be down over that Arizona game, if you think for a second that they are thinking about that today, if you think for a second that it will have any impact at all on how they play today, you're wrong. They don't care. They don't care about Arizona. They don't care about Oregon or Utah or anybody else. They don't care that they wear uniforms that look like they were designed by a Disney princess. They only care about you. They care only about destroying what you've worked for. They care only about ruining your dreams. That's it. In fact, if you told UCLA that they could go back in time and play that Arizona game again, they would say no. They'd take the loss. Just because their loss hurts USC's strength of schedule and makes it less likely that you guys will make the playoff, they'd take the loss just to hurt you. That's how it's been for many years, for longer than any of you have been alive. And that makes them dangerous today. Sure, they only play hard one week a year, and that's what makes them unpredictable. The history of this rivalry is full of the unexpected, the impossible. No-name UCLA players playing like All-Americans. Mediocre UCLA teams knocking USC out of the national championship picture. Go ask any of those fans out there what their favorite game of all time is, and they'll tell you, 13 to nine. Why? Did that game put UCLA in the national title game? Did it deliver a Rose Bowl berth? No, they finished that season with six losses. They played in the Emerald Bowl. It was just another in a long line of lousy UCLA football seasons, but they ruined USC's dreams. That's all that matters. Would USC fans react the same way? Would we cherish for the rest of our lives being lousy, but knocking UCLA out of the national title game? In fairness, it's hard to say, because it's almost impossible to imagine UCLA ever being in a position to make a national championship game. But I think the answer is no. We'd take the win, we'd make fun of the Bruins on the way out, and then we'd rent a plane to fly a banner over our stadium demanding the firing of our underperforming coach. But these guys care only about you. That's why you cannot let up for a minute. You cannot drop your guard, even for a second. Every single play is the play that could decide this game. And you won't know ahead of time, most of the time, it isn't the fourth and goal play late in the fourth quarter that decides a game. Most of the time, it's a second and seven early in the third. It's a punt just before halftime. It's a seemingly routine play that you never could have imagined would be the key play of the game, the key play to your season, the key play to all of your championship goals. And that's why you must play every play like it's your last, because if you don't, that could be the play that ends your dreams. Now, gentlemen, I don't doubt at all, not one bit, not for a second, that you are better than your opponent. I don't doubt for a second that if you play with the effort we expect of ourselves, if you play with the focus we expect of ourselves, if you play with the discipline we expect of ourselves, if you play with a skill that you developed over hundreds and hundreds of hours in the weight room, the film room, and the practice field, that you will be successful today. I know how badly you want to win this game, but it's not enough to want it. The game is yours if and only if you play with that effort, that focus, that discipline, and that skill play after play for the entire game. If you play to our standard, your opponent cannot defeat you. And if you do that, when we all leave here today, they will continue to be nothing, 
you will continue to be on your way to being champions because that's what we're about. It's who we are. And I know that UCLA is getting a little chippy. I know they made comments in the media about how they're going to win this game. But I encourage you to play with your pads, not your mouths. In the words of Benjamin Franklin, the favorite president of UCLA star Freddie Mitchell, well done is better than well said. So go leave it all on the field, gentlemen. Don't leave here with regrets. Everything you want is still there for the taking if you take care of business today. So let's end with the wise words of maybe the greatest Bruin of them all, UCLA star Daryl Hindley, who said after being jailed for drug trafficking and the attempted murder of a federal judge, not one thing we did was worth it, not one place we went, not one stripper we saw, nothing, not one thing. Take those words to heart, gentlemen. Make sure what you do today is worth it. This game is yours, gentlemen. Go take it.